Hi, everybody on YouTube and Zoom. We'll get started here in about 60 seconds. Um, glad everybody can join us and look forward to today's webinar. Hi, everybody on YouTube and Zoom. We'll get started here in about 60 seconds. Um, glad everybody can join us and look forward to today's webinar. Echo, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, everybody ready? Okay, hey, hi everybody. Welcome to USA Hockey webinar series presented by Pure Hockey and BioSteel. Today we have a, a, a great webinar talking with our Director of Program Services, Katie Holmgren, and a couple model clubs. And um, just, just wanna give our associations and program um, clubs some information of how they can grow their membership. And Katie's been with USA Hockey since uh, 2010. She was in the adult department and then for the for the and came over to the pro, director of program services in 2018. So she's done a really great job with a lot of the the model uh, associations and clubs throughout the country. And um, Katie, it is all yours now. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having us on today. Um, real quick introduction to myself. Um, like Dave mentioned, I'm the director of program services at USA Hockey and. Not everyone knows what that means, even if you are an association within USA Hockey. So um, a little bit background on our department is, it was originally formed as membership development. So we were formed um, to help our local associations grow and really focus on growth resources at the eight and under level. And since that happened, um, growth at the eight and under level has skyrocketed uh, kind of, and we've, we've really helped um, our local associations with resources on that side, primarily in the form of Try Hockey for Free Days, which are national dates that we host twice a year, uh, and then other resources like a registration platform and some things we're going to talk about. So um, I did start in the adult department here. I was the first coordinator of adult women's hockey and then manager of adult hockey and oversaw a lot of our events and was asked to come over to program services about a year and a half ago and, and kind of revamp a little bit of the way we do things. So. We recognize at USA Hockey that we're great with coaching resources. As you know, if you've been following along with our webinars, great at officiating resources. Uh, and on the association leadership side, the one thing we were doing was growth resources, but that was about it. So in addition to all of our growth resources that we offer that we're gonna talk about today, we offer uh, some association leadership training and guidance so that if you're a local association, we have some steps to walk you through kind of leading with intent and promoting your association and talking about things that are not the always fun part of hockey, but board governance for nonprofit boards and things like that in the form of club excellence. So um, I am going to share my screen here real quick before we um, introduce our guests and they're gonna talk a little bit about our growth resources and, and then some marketing of your own association. So, um, I know it will be linked, I believe Dave said, so I'll, I'll show you our website. If you go under program services, um, this is the basics of it. And there's, there's kind of three different pieces here. So under growth, you can find all the resources we're gonna talk about primarily our try hockey for free days today, and then our hat trick growth challenge, which is kind of an all encompassing growth challenge to lead associations through different growth initiatives. And then we do partner with the girls women's section on girls hockey weekend. Um, each year that's a double IHF initiative, but obviously as the governing body in the US, we like to participate and promote um, the girls game. So, and then as I mentioned, program services, instead of just membership development, um, where we help our local programs uh, lead with in the form of club excellence. So club excellence is an online platform to sort of lead an association through their season. So they have different, uh, we have different board positions that are listed within there and then tasks within uh, those positions to kind of help associations uh, move smoothly through a hockey season so that one person doesn't have to remember everything that every board position is supposed to do, but it can all live in club excellence for you. So the exciting part about a lot of stuff here, if you do visit our website, is that we're revamping a ton of stuff, which was one of my big projects 
We're relaunching our Try Hockey for Free website to make it more accessible um, for our associations, be more informative for the new hockey parent who might visit it. Um, and then also we've added some, some stuff where it was primarily focused at the AU level and we've added some tools for um, adult leagues and um, disabled disciplines so that it's more all encompassing for our membership. So one thing we really um, strive to do in program services is work within um, USA Hockey with all of our other departments so that the resources we had already built that already exist, they're available for um, other departments within USA Hockey, as well as our associations to use locally so that you don't have to come up with things on your own. Um, so I will go into the growth portion since we're talking about that. Um, this is where all of our growth initiatives live, where we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna touch on it briefly today, but if you visit the website, you can find more information about the Hat Trick Challenge, and our Try Hockey for Free Days, it gives you way more information, goes really into depth about what you need as a host site to help growth and then a place to register as well. Same with our Hat Trick Growth Challenge, which is pretty encompassing for a lot of different pieces of growth that um, you might already be doing, but we can reward you for doing and lead you through that throughout the season. So when you go to this website, a lot of stuff you'll see right now is telling you due to the current situation, we're not approving sites, um, but we hope to be able to soon as we relaunch everything. So. Uh, I know that will be linked, so I'll stop sharing that. Um, I am going to toss this over to Jesse Simcoe, who is our first guest. Um, Jesse, if you want to introduce yourself and kind of give a little bit of background and where you're from, and would love to hear why our growth resources work well for your association. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jesse Simcoe. I'm from uh, Midcoast Recreation Center in Rockport, Maine. So uh, I grew up in Maine playing hockey and uh, had uh, just the, the kind of calling to be able to give back to the sport and to uh, keep things fun and uh, get as many people playing as I can. So that's, that's my role is uh, to be able to, to do that for my arena. But also uh, I also serve on my local state board as a vice president too, which is focused on uh, grow the game. So our state board uh, has done a great thing by being able to have a position really extending out who needs two vice presidents, but that, we'll take it. And uh, it's it's uh, being able to add that extra focus, which I think is extremely important of being able to have a more focused effort on growing the game at the roots. And uh, that's where, where we're going to be able to create the best experience for our kids is to be able to have a lot of kids, kids playing, making it a, a great thing that everybody wants to, to be a part of. And, uh, and so that's, uh, that's what we're up to. Um, so I'll uh, speak a little bit about what, uh, what I've done through, through USA Hockey's resources with uh, the Hat Trick Challenge, which when I started was uh, the two and two growth challenge. Uh, it's kind of put on a new face and has made it a little bit more user friendly uh, that you're, you're able to as an organization now, if you haven't uh, done the Hat Trick Challenge, but used to do the two and two, is uh, it's changing that you can pick and choose a little bit more readily what your uh, options are. Uh, so some areas have uh, certain things that will work really well for your, your market. Uh, other areas have other things and, and it kind of depends on uh, what you've done in the past. Uh, sometimes it's nice to be able to, to reintroduce something that you've done you know, three or four years ago, but has you've just stopped doing. Um, and that can add a little bit new, uh, new excitement and freshness for your local area. Um, but we do everything uh, as the standards with, um, we make sure that at the start of the season, we, we do a welcome back week uh, leading up to it. We'll do a phone call retention calls. Uh, USA Hockey has a great resource with their uh, phone call retention manual. Uh, highly recommend being able to take advantage of that. Uh, it's, it's one of our best kind of programs being able to have uh, a set of families that you can ask to to get together and uh, and make phone calls uh, has everything from the scripts that you can use as templates um, so it's it's really uh, plug and play you can you can really put in uh, the just your info about your program and uh, it makes it super uh, quick and easy and you can use it for many years so we've been doing it for for the last five years and uh, we have we have definitely seen uh, the the improvement by doing that um, Jesse, if I can just jump in here real quick on that. So 
Yeah. Three pieces of the hat trick growth challenge that Jesse's talking about are retention, acquisition, and conversion, which are like the three key pieces that we see to growth at your eight and under level. And uh, we do a pretty cool phone call um, system that Jesse mentioned that's um, automatically in the fall during welcome back week. We have a men's and women's national team player that record a message that gets sent out to all players that aren't registered for the season. And like Jesse mentioned, and we talk about being a resource, we're not asking you to do more. We're really providing the resources for you. And I think you touched on that really well is um, we send those phone calls for you. And it's a really cool program that, you know, kids got a phone call last year um, from Jack Hughes and you get parents that call us back and go, oh my gosh, can you please resend the phone call? Because I accidentally answered it and I wanted to go to voicemail so I can play, play it for my kid. It's exciting, you know, saying welcome back to the rink. So I think, Jesse, you probably know as well as I do, we talked a little earlier that, especially this year, the more we can get kids excited about getting back to the rink and, and ramped up, that's going to be a huge part of it. So, sorry yeah. to interrupt. I thought. No I worries. Absolutely. That, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. And, and I agree. I, I would say all those things are, are wonderful. Um, the, uh, some of the things that we've noticed with uh, being able to have, um, whether one person or a couple people being able to take uh, some calls to to reinvite parents back is just that extra little personal factor of, hey, we're going to come back to the rink, uh, finding a couple uh, families who are excited and, and energized to, to get back into it uh, can be one of those great resources just to say, hey, friendly face, uh, would love to have you back. Um, welcome back to the family. Um, that's uh, that's always an extra nice touch. Uh, so so beyond our retention calls, uh, getting back to our season kickoff. Um, so that's part of our retention program is that we do a season kickoff every year. Uh, we make a, a, our own try hockey for free event during that. So we use some of the resources that USA hockey provides to create our own uh, try hockey event. And uh, it's a way for people to, to try for free and have no strings attached. And oftentimes we'll find that we'll, we'll get uh, some players out of that just out of gen general public. We'll, there'll be a public skate and, uh, right after we'll we'll be advertising the try hockey for free and it works really well. Um, so that's another another great thing that's worked well for us. Um, and uh, we definitely take take advantage of being able to do uh, the growth grants that are through the state. Um, so uh, Miaha or which is our local state organization, uh, we have uh, a growth grant, so a grant specifically focused on growing the game initiatives and. Uh, and so each year we we give out a lot of a lot of money to be able to to help with various initiatives. So um, don't be afraid if you haven't been involved in your local state organization uh, to be able to to look there for some of those extra funds to help with some of the these initiatives that you're putting out. Um, highly recommend that. Um, and then uh, beyond that, it's a lot of communication. Uh, being able to to get uh, communication to the families, uh, having the start of the year meeting, letting people know. Uh, how important it is to be able to, to help us try to get as many friends as they can can get out there, especially at the 8U and 6U level. It's uh, super important to be able to get uh, the numbers in there because as soon as they start to play the game, it's, you know, for for a lot of kids, I was one of them. Uh, all they need is to hit the ice once and and you get hooked. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I It's still my favorite way to, uh, to get physical exercise and I'm sure it's going to continue that way. But uh, either, either way. Um, yeah, they, those are the couple of things that we do for retention. Uh, the acquisition, again, being able to do the try hockey for free events has been great. Um, and, uh, we work with a local youth, uh, female organization to be able to, to get, uh, some girl specific initiatives in, and that's been really successful. That's, uh, there, there's been a lot of, uh, retention that we've seen happen, um, by being able to have an all girls program and to have some, all girls try hockey for free days. Um, the last thing I'll mention is uh, our conversion. Basically, uh, just to hit on that really quick, uh, we essentially are we we make sure that we make it really accessible for people who are trying to play the game. Uh, we we specifically do uh, a um, sorry about that had a pop up. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we specifically um, make sure that we have our learn to play programs ready to go. Uh, as soon as somebody does get in the door and has any questions, we make sure our, um, our front desk staff at our, our arena knows the information at the start of the season and can answer the questions of, Hey, here's where you go. This is how you, how you can get in. 
um, these are the programs, here are the steps, and we can, we can follow up with emails to, to make sure they feel welcome and at home. Um, so we, uh, we make sure that we've got our programs in place and, uh, and that it's easy and accessible. Uh, we keep a low cost of entry in, so it makes it uh, one less barrier for people to come in. And uh, that's, that's what's worked really well for our particular situation organization. And, uh, and again, we're, we're really super happy to be able to be uh, part of USA Hockey and take advantage of all the resources that, that are already there. Um, that's, that's really what we've done and uh, that's where we've seen our success. So I'll turn it over. Thanks for having me. That's awesome. Thanks, Jesse. Um, I think you touched on something that's pretty important that we, we talk about a lot with best practices and especially with our Tri Hockey for Free training, but um, to have your next steps programming in place. So Tri Hockey for Free is obviously our biggest initiative to get new families in the door, but that hat trick growth challenge really leads you through not only getting new kids in, but um, retaining and, and, and making sure that they're, they're back for the next year. So Tri Hockey for Free is big, but, but those next steps programming and having it simple and it's available at the rink already and then you touched on another piece that um, I know we're going to have Erica and I have talked about a lot, which is communication with your rink and your other programming um, within your facility. So everybody knows, um, you know, where to go. Your um, front desk staff can answer questions about your association. That's that's huge. So um, thanks, Jesse. I really appreciate that. So I am going to um, and we might have some questions for you later, Jesse. So so hang on about that hat trick growth challenge. Um, I'm going to introduce Angie, who is um, in quite a different market. So Jesse's up in Maine, and we've got Angie, who is in Austin, Texas, a little bit different, <laughs> um, non-traditional market, I would say. So different challenges to overcome, which um, you guys still do a, a great job down there with limited ice sheets as well. Um, and so Angie, I'll let you introduce yourself. Um, would love for you. We talked a little bit earlier about your Tri Hockey for Free Days and the success you guys have had. You've been doing them since we started. Um, the one thing I'll say is um, if you go to our website and or you've seen any marketing about it, our Tri Hockey for Free Days, we do two national dates each year. And so um, you're allowed to use our, our portal or we encourage everybody to sign up through our portal. You get sanctioning through USA Hockey as long as you're a USA Hockey Association. Um, it's a great way to keep track of your list of kids who are registered. There's national marketing for it. Um, and then I will touch a little bit after this on the fact that you can use it on non-national dates as well, which is kind of a, a common misconception. People think, okay, we have these two national dates. These are the only things you can sign up for. But um, Angie, again, I'll let you introduce yourself, kind of give your background and, and where you're at, and then talk to us a little bit about those Tri Hockey for Free Days for your organization. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Katie. Thanks for having us here. So yeah, in Austin, we are definitely a non-traditional market. Um, we've got uh, limited ice sheets here, and they've sort of wavered over the years. Um, they've come and gone, and so you have to get creative with how we get kids introduced to the sport. Um, so my background, I work for Chaparral Ice Center. I've been there since 2002. And I've had every hat, um, wore every hat, and now I'm the general manager, but I oversee a lot of the programming um, for all of our instructional hockey uh, development growth. Um, and then I also sit on our AMHA, that's our association in town. Um, I'm the coach director for that, do all of our CEP training. Um, and then at Taha, I'm the girls women's section rep for our affiliate. So I'm involved all over the place and have seen it for the last 18 years, sort of how it grows um, and what works We've taken advantage of all of the Tri Hockey for Free dates um, that have come along. There's been times where we've had limited ice. And so I've had um, Tri Hockey for Free on the same ice as a public session, just with borders in the way. Um, we've, we've gotten really creative with how we get the kids in there. And I think the biggest thing that we found um, at the national level, having it advertised on a national scene, that has been the biggest thing. Um, Austin is a city full of transplants. so. A lot of people have moved here. Um, there's a big university, obviously, a big tech center. And so it's seeing that commercial while they're watching an NHL game that says, hey, try hockey for free. It's at your local rink. And they go online and find out, oh, my goodness, there's ice skating in Austin, Texas. So that has been huge, super, super successful. Um, the Valentine's cards that USA Hockey gives you as well, um, the different cards that they send out um, for there's Halloween and Valentine's that you can give so to your I'll, families. Oh, yeah, I wanna to touch on that real quick since you're mentioning it for anybody that doesn't know, when you register for our national dates, we kind of provide you with a toolkit. We do otherwise as well, but those two dates, 
they're kind of particular about it for those reasons. So we do one in early November. Um, you know, we always struggle, how do you get, aside from the national marketing, how do you get kids there? So what we do is we'd send an association, um, like we're Angie or Jesse, any local association that signs up, we send you a pack. Um, for the fall, we send you Halloween cards because kids still get to give away Halloween cards in school. So you give them out to kids that are already in your association. They bring them to school. They're customizable with your, um, you know, your local association information and then the searchable information. And then in February, we organize it on purpose, obviously during um, Hockey Week across America, but then we send Valentine's cards, same concept, it gets you into school. So if anybody doesn't know what she's talking about, that's, you know, it's our creative way. It's hard to get information into schools sometimes, but we send it to your kids that are already in your association or recruiting those kids for try hockey for three days. So continue, sorry. And, awesome. and real quick, so, if I could interject, sorry about that. The uh, Halloween cards, we uh, just wanted to make mention that uh, we've had some good success with being able to tape uh, lifesavers or uh, various candy to those cards. And it's, uh, it, I think it's helped a little bit in being able to, to have kids grab it and realize while they were having their candy, oh, all right, there's something Anything cool. Anything to catch their attention. Great advice, Jesse. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's worked out really well for us. Um, and then there's also, so having the Try Hockey for free, um, as Katie said, it gives you a list of all the things you have to remember. There's the campaign for emailing, for social media. That just gives you um, guidelines of when you should be sending out information, what it needs to look like or what it could look like. There's posters that you can print um, where you can um, actually make them for your own rink. So you put in and personalize them with all your own information. That's been really helpful too. Um, and then we've also taken advantage of the portal being able to register other Try Hockey for Free programs that we've ran in Austin. Um, and so we've been able to get the portal so we can send families, hey, if you want to try it for free, we're going to have it on this date. And they actually open it up to you so that you can have them register through USA Hockey. That means they start getting um, information from USA Hockey. So there's, there's just a ton of resources there. That's how, um, it'll, it's helped us like crazy over the past you know, 20 years as we're trying to grow and build. And now we've got new rinks coming online and that's gonna be huge. Um, we'll be doing a huge push to try to get new skaters in the rink this fall. So we're really excited about it and grateful that we have this resource. Um, one thing that when we were talking earlier, Angie, you mentioned, um, and I think this is something that sort of gets neglected and obviously we don't have a lot of control over because we're on the hockey side of things, but you mentioned that you work in conjunction with your figure skating group within your building um to kind of work on those try hockey for free days and so if you could touch on that relationship I think it's something that sometimes we see um if you ha don't have a close relationship with them you almost see it as a competitor but really we're all in the in this together kind of and a lot of kids go into U.S. figure skating's learn to skate program so it's important to have that group kind of on board when you're doing try hockey for free days um and and that mutual communication so um, I know you talked about that relationship being big earlier. So if you don't mind mentioning that. Yeah, we've got a great um, relationship between my Learn to Skate director and myself. Um, we work really collaboratively. Um, all of our programs, we make sure that we are offering options. So if kids can't come to my um, instructional hockey classes, we actually have them use the Learn to Skate classes as their like makeup days. And it's worked out pretty brilliantly, uh, brilliantly because the kids are learning from different instructors. They're learning different um, techniques to learn the same skill basically. Um, so we've loved it. And then for the um, try hockey initiatives, we also have like learn to skate initiatives as well. And so we're able to have them at different times of the year. So we're sort of um, dividing and conquering basically. Uh, and then for a lot of the, the ice times that I have, we'll have the learn to skate instructors will help us with the try hockey for free dates to help with, um, you know, teaching the basic skills moves to the kids. Um, it's worked out really well. So we, um, we've got a very good within our rank, a really good working relationship with our figure skating programs. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of the things that um, Angie touched on were the resources that we offer for try hockey. So we, we do offer the national platform. So on those two national dates, um, if you go to tryhockeyforfree.com, which is the big website that we push, uh, the national dates are searchable by zip code. Um, and the reason we only have it searchable for those two national dates is just kind of to avoid confusion. So like Angie talked about, they use it for other dates. We don't post those as searchable purely so that there's no confusion. So if you're hosting a date another time of year, um, you know, a kid doesn't show up to your rink, um, maybe when you're not 
hosting an event. Um, we also offer customizable resources. So we've got posters that you can use. We put together a social media calendar, again, a kind of a plug and play so that it really kind of takes that work off it because we try hockey for free days are a lot of work as <laughs> um, these groups can attest to. And I'll probably throw some questions after um, we get to our last panelist, but try hockey for free days are a lot of work to organize um, and it can be kind of overwhelming. So with the lead up to it, we really want to make sure that we're offering those resources to get the kids in the door uh, so we offer customizable posters, um, everything you can imagine. There's all kinds of fun slogans. Uh, we offer it for our national dates as well as our non-national dates. And so when you, you don't have to come up with your marketing on your own, we've got it for you. We wanna make sure that you don't have to come up with a poster. If you're not a social media guru, we have it for you. We have those, those calendars that are ready for plug and play and it's, it's always available to you whether you're hosting for a national date or not. Um, I think those national dates, we probably can all agree, are the, the big drivers of it because of all the national advertising. But when you do it on a non-national date, and this will tie well into our next panelist, Erica, um, when you host on a non-national date, you can still use our Try Hockey for Free portal, which not everybody knows. Uh, the only, the, the difference is that we don't send you the cards because it may not be on one of those dates, um, but we still have access to all the other resources to post on social media, to um, you know, get drive kids to your rink and so you're sent a direct link to register. So the difference would be that you're kind of responsible for marketing those dates um, and getting that information out. And so I am going to introduce Erica, who is our guest from US Figure Skating. So all this ties well in together. Um, Erica and I have worked together a couple times on our hockey director admin course as well. She's kind of our expert on marketing um, outside your direct group. Cause you know, if you just post on your own website or your own um, Facebook page, you're reaching the people that are already interested in your programming. So while that's good, if you're looking to grow your association membership, you need to look outside. So we do give a lot of best practices, um, but you know, if you're gonna make that poster and you're gonna customize it, are you gonna post it just to your audience? Um, probably not really. Um, <laughs> So I'm gonna have Erica from US Figure Skating talk about kind of marketing outside your bubble, which is obviously something we encourage. And again, as we kind of maneuver through this new, how when things reopen, um, we're working really closely with US Figure Skating and US Ice Rinks on return to rinks policies, which are also on our website. Um, but Erica is kind of gonna to talk to you guys about um, marketing outside that direct group. But also Erica, if you wanna give your background a little bit, um, I know we're both in the same town right now, but. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm the marketing director at US Figure Skating and Learn to Skate USA. So I grew up figure skating. I was actually um, the president of the Fort Collins Figure Skating Club in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I went to college at UNH, so big hockey school. So I went to a lot of hockey games. Um, but so my background is actually in digital marketing. And then I kind of found my way to US Figure Skating, kind of an accidental path there. but. Um, what I love to do is to focus on the data-driven digital marketing and to help our clubs and programs across the country with figure skating or Learn to Skate USA, learn how to market in a new way and kind of get out of that bubble that you can easily get trapped in of just your people at the ranks. So um, we've been deploying a lot of these campaigns. We do big ones out of headquarters, and then we've been training our Learn to Skate programs and figure skating clubs on how to do this type of campaign and it's been working really, really well. So we kind of have focused on this sort of event-based idea where you have one single event and you use that to drive new people to your program and you kind of create a repetitive uh, process there. So that's kind of what, I actually have some slides for, to prepare to show you guys kind of what we do. So Katie, are you cool if I dive in and just- Absolutely, okay. take it away. Awesome, um, so this is actually very similar to what I do at the figure skating clubs. So I thought I'd just share a little bit visually of what the process looks like. Um, so I call this getting out of your bubble. So get out of your bubble. The big thing here is just learning how to market to your inner and your outer circle. So your inner circle, those are the people that already know who you are, they know what you do, they kind of, they have reason to take action, but they already know who you are. So they're the people who've gone to the ice rink, they've um, participated in your programs, they have friends that participate in your programs. They're already really familiar with your brand. They just need a reason to kind of fall over the edge and join and take action. Um, so that's why all those things like flyers, things on your bulletin boards, um, press releases, like anything that kind of hits your local group or people that are already in your circle. When you have those great events that can pull people in even more, that's a good thing to do there. 
your outer circle's a little tough um, because those are people that might not be familiar with your organization. They might not have ever contemplated your service offerings, but if they're given the right option, the right offer at the right time in the right place, they'll definitely jump on board. So that's the really important thing here is the right offer at the right time and the right place. Um, so that's kind of what I, I'm going to talk about, and that's also what we've really leveraged with our campaigns and seen a lot of growth. Um, so what we have here is actually a four-step process that we repeat on a big scale or a small scale, and that is to identify your target audience, create um, a, fee, a FOMO offer, so a fear of missing out offer that they can't refuse, so something that's really, really exciting and timely. Utilize paid social media marketing tactics to promote your offer to a target audience. So this is can be a very small budget of $25 to $50, but it can go a very long way. And then capture contact information and bring these people into your inner circle. So your whole goal here is to connect with people in that outer circle and then use the strategic initiative to bring them into your inner circle. So when the timing's right, those people will join your program and take action. Um, so I'm gonna give you a real life example we've done. We do these Learn to Skate USA Skate Fests across the country. So it's just a one day only free lesson opportunity. We go around all over the United States and we offer one day only free lessons. Um, so one thing we were really worried about is we had one at Wrigley Field. It was free outdoor skating lessons, but the average temperature had been around eight degrees. So we're like, great, who's gonna come? And it was also on a Tuesday night in the middle of February. So we're very concerned people might not come. So we really had to structure this offer in an exciting way. So rather than focusing on the temperatures or Learn to Skate USA, we just focus on one night only, so this one opportunity, free ice skating lessons for all ages and skill levels in an iconic and memorable location. So the thing there is this is one night only, the free lesson, so it's your, your one shot to try this, and then it's an iconic location that you might not ever get this experience again. Um, we put a three-day paid social media marketing campaign together. We had a $100 budget. And we targeted anyone which was in 20 miles of Wrigley Field. So we didn't go outside that bubble because we thought people wouldn't travel. And the result was we had 100 brand new families come skate in negative, it was actually negative degrees later on in the evening, but it was very, very cold. We had 100 new families and I actually only spent $20 of my $100 budget because our pre-registration filled up in a matter of about two hours. Um, so this worked really, really well. So this is the exact process I'm gonna share with you now. The first thing is we identified and connected with our target audience. So we did a big survey of our Learn to Skate USA database, and we have all this, this stuff here on the left that tells us about who our average family is. Um, we kind of crunched everything down and saw that really the main decision makers in almost every family when it comes to ice skating or any sort of leisure activity, whether it's soccer, football, figure skating, hockey, art classes, anything like that, it's usually the mom that's generally the one that's sort of making the decision and also transporting kids to and from. The moms are generally age 30 to 45, so that's a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing your targeting. And they often live, to, live within 25 miles of your facility. So a lot of people will not go beyond that 25 mile radius to participate in something. Even though it might be really cool and fun, that all of a sudden that cost outweighs the benefit. So the time in the car, the time spent getting there outweighs that benefit. Um, they like ice skating and similar activities. And then these people also spend a lot of time on their smartphones. So they're connected 24 seven. That's kind of just a defining characteristic of this generation at the moment and the people we're seeing participating in ice sports. So this isn't looking at figure skating, this is actually looking at people who sign their kids up for that very first day of ice skating lessons. So that's our target audience, so we identified them. Next thing to do is to create that fear of missing out offer that people can't refuse. Um, so a good thing to keep in mind here is you want something that's limited time, that's very timely and unique so it builds excitement. So you don't say, we offer year round ice skating lessons, sign up for a free lesson. Well, that's great, but it doesn't encourage anyone to take action now. So you want something that feels like one day only. If I miss out on this, I'll never have the chance again. Like I'm going to drop everything and sign up. You want to make sure that people understand that there's limited space available. So that prompts them to take action now instead of 20 minutes from now, 40 minutes from now. You want them to take action at that very second. And then the last thing is you want pre-registration to be required. So you want to force them to commit. So what you don't want is to have 100 slots, have people say, oh, yes, I'm coming to this online Facebook event. And then none of those people at RSVP actually show up. So you really want to do something that forces them to put a bit of skin in the game. So here's an example offer. Um, this one's an exact copy actually that we did for Learn to Skate USA when we partnered with a rink downtown here in Colorado Springs. But it was all about the opportunity of learning how to skate and the fact that this is one day only, spots fill up fast, you can register online. It was nothing about the Learn to Skate USA brand. So not about Learn to Skate USA at all. It was not about ongoing programming. So it wasn't about the fact that you could take ongoing lessons. It's just this one shot to try it. 
Um, and it wasn't about the cost schedules or anything. It's, it's free. And then we can go from there. But right now it's all about that one time opportunity and experience. And then from there, I'm going to kind of group these last two steps together. It's you utilize paid social media marketing to promote that offer. And then you capture contact information while driving home that offer. So if you have your own try hockey for free day, let's say in the middle of May, and you can't rely on the big national campaign, see how you can structure this offer to feel like a one-time only really exciting event, position it to your target audience, and then capture information from people registering. So here's kind of what that looks like. Um, the biggest thing to remember here is that while we always want people to be at our bulletin boards or to like look something up or go to the front desk, a lot of people when they're bored or have nothing to do or on their downtime, they're on their phone. So if they're you know, if they're waiting in line at the grocery store, if they're waiting to pick up a kid somewhere, if they're waiting for the pasta to boil, they are usually on their phone, like scrolling through social media, checking emails. Their phone is where they are, not necessarily the desktop. So keep that in mind with any campaign. Um, and then another thing you wanna keep in mind is like, if you're gonna do this paid social media campaign to really know what works and what doesn't. So I always say a small budget, know who you're targeting, and then just make sure you have that offer crafted. And targeting. I want to touch on this real quick is really, really important. And I like to give this analogy of if I gave each of my parents, my mother and my father, $100 and said, hey, I'm having a barbecue, buy me supplies. My mom would go buy like table linens, flowers, um, like fruits. She'd buy everything except for she wouldn't buy any meats or like grilling utensils. If I gave $100 to my dad, he would buy charcoal and meat, but he wouldn't buy anything else to make this barbecue happen. And then in either instance, I'm not having the event that I want to have. Um, so with Facebook, you actually really have to provide a very targeted list and give Facebook an exact shopping list of who you're looking for when you're running these campaigns. Um, here's an example of two ads that came to me. I'm a Hamilton junkie. So here's an ad I screenshotted when they were advertising to me. And then I also wear glasses and I'm always looking for like cute prescription sunglasses. So Tiffany and company advertised to me. So these are timely relevant ads going just to me because of what I like. Um, and you can do the same thing. So just make sure you identify who you're trying to reach where they're located and their defining characteristics. So with that learn to skate audience or the potential hockey audience, it's you're targeting with moms, I'd say age 25 to 45. They're located with 25 miles of the facility because no one, a lot of people won't drive beyond that. They might if they're really invested, but they might not. And then you wanna plug in those defining characteristics or what these people care about. So for us, that's a lot of people like ice skating, winter Olympics, Disney on ice, but think about what things the mom who runs this family is gonna like on Facebook. So what sort of other businesses, companies, entertainment options, what does that mom or that family care about that might also define them? Um, you're gonna also be hit with some more targeting options. These are just ones I would kind of shy away from right now. The big thing to focus on, on is those interests and those demographics. So avoid those lookalike audiences right now, avoid people who are friends and people who like your page. Um, you can't get into those later, but I would be a little cautious with those in the beginning. And then you're just simply gonna post that, post whatever offer you create online and boost to that audience. So I actually walked through that entire process and took screenshots along the way. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what that looks like. So here's just a little post we did for Learn to Skate USA. And I'm gonna show you how I'd go through the process of boosting that. So I crafted it, I hit that boost button. I am um, brought up some options here on the side where I can actually choose the objective. And I just say, I wanna get more people to like, comment and share it and see it. Um, I can determine if I want a button or not. So I choose no button. I can determine who I'm targeting. So that's where I plug in the who, the where, and the what. So that's where I say that I want people that live within 25 miles of my facility. I want moms age 25 to 45 who are interested in these things. Um, and then that's where I can also plug in like this different, different targeting options. So actually in doing this, another little window will pop up, which will allow me to put in those exact options. So you can see here, I chose women 30 to 55, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 25 miles of my facility. I can actually layer in certain interests. So I can actually say, I want parents with preteens, preschoolers and school age children. And then I want people who also like Disney on ice, figure skating and gymnastics. So Facebook says, okay, here's her shopping list. And I will not deviate from that. I'm just gonna edit my placement. So here's where I just say, I wanna advertise only on Facebook. You can layer in Instagram and messenger if you want, but I would say, just start with Facebook, nice and simple. Set your budget. So I just said $25 for five days. Facebook will cut that off at that $25 mark and will not spend a cent more. So I know that I'm not overspending. Um, and then the last thing is I have to enter a payment option. We have an account at US Figure Skating, but you could put this on your own card and ask for reimbursement if you just want to try this out one time. And then you just hit boost and your ad is ready to go. 
Um, one thing I just want you to, re to remind you about when you're doing this is that your website is actually sort of the hub of all your marketing initiatives and social media is one spoke. It's really easy to get so excited about a social media campaign, but if you're ultimately driving people to your website to sign up and participate, you have to make sure that that website can support all that traffic coming from social. So don't forget about your website. And also don't forget that that kind of like kicks off your whole path to conversion. So maybe someone sees this great social campaign and is engaged, but then if that website flow actually can't support those initiatives, you've lost people. So just make sure that your website is audited and can handle everything that you're doing. The website, whatever registration process you have. Um, so here's kind of, again, that simple action plan, but I put it into five steps. You're gonna audit your website, you're gonna craft that enticing post that no one can refuse. I would say boost it for about seven days, maximum seven days, I'd say three to seven. Follow up with everyone who registered after that's over by sending them an email reminding them to show up. And then after that event's over, you could follow up with another offer like, oh, thanks for showing up at our event. You can have 10% off your first session of coffee lessons or something like that. And then you just always wanna measure and track those results. So remember to watch what you're looking at and see what worked and what didn't. Uh, so here's an exact campaign flow we use for a campaign. But so here again is that exact process. So you start about two weeks out, you'll run that campaign. You'll send a reminder email to everyone that signed up about five days out, another reminder the day before. You have this fun, great, successful event. And then afterwards you follow up with a letter thanking them for coming or thanking them for registering if they couldn't come and then sending them an offer, another offer they can't refuse. So you got them in with that first offer. Now you got to get them to stay with you. And the last thing is you just don't want to forget to analyze those results. So there's no point in doing a big paid social campaign and putting all sorts of time and energy into it, even if you have a small budget, if you're not seeing how that campaign performed. Um, and I guarantee if you give this a try and you follow that targeting, you will definitely see some really good results. So we've seen it across the country. We see it with our own campaigns. Um, but one really important thing here that's really easy to forget is you're so excited because that event's over and you're like, yes, we did it onto the next, and then the next one comes and you ever, never actually looked at the success of what happened. So it's always good to track those results. Um, so that's it for my slides for you today. I kind of powered through that, but I'm happy to talk that about- That was great. Sure, and answer any questions too. So thank you. So um, thank you, Erica. So the reason I had Erica on, I'm sure as anybody um, watching can tell, she has great information and that was like really, really condensed for us, but um, the reason I asked her to come on is because we've talked about this a lot and it's an easy thing as much as it seemed like there was a lot of information it's really easy to replicate for a local association so the difference I would say Erica we've talked about this is um, you guys have those like real targeted you know like your learn to skates like you'll do that festival where we don't really do that on the national level so groups like Jesse and Angie are hosting their own but that stuff's super easy to replicate at the local level so Again, you know, we're talking about the resources that exist within um, program services and we have those social media calendars and campaigns and things. So we don't always, um, you know, give you all that information, but we're starting to add kind of those things and we give you plug and play. So the posters that we give you, I encourage you to think a little bit outside the box, right? You know, Angie touched on, they're customizable. So you can take any image that you like, boys, girls, um, any disabled, now adult resources, um, and customize them to your association, and then use them for that marketing as well. So you can really make sure that that, um, that fits into your social media campaign. So um, have either Jesse or Angie, have you guys done any Facebook social media stuff? We have, um, we've done quite a bit of it and we've started boosting. It's funny, I feel like in the beginning, we never wanted to spend a penny um, on boosts. And then we realized that it was such an important part of what we were doing. So we've really started to boost them now. Um, one of the things I think the KPIs, like the following up and making sure, like seeing where the kids are coming from, it, what worked, what didn't work and tracking it is something that we often um, don't think about. And so I think that's really important is making sure that we're following up and seeing where the folks are coming from. Um, that's huge. I just, it's such an easy thing to replicate on, on a local level, um, you know, and it's limited budget if you're on Facebook. So I know Jesse, you guys, I, I know, I don't, you know your numbers off the top of my head when you took over and started the growth. I know that we've talked about it, but um, have you guys used the, the social media marketing piece? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, so just those numbers real quick. We are, our program, as we were seeing it, was was starting to flounder. It was uh, run by the uh, a local youth ho hockey organization that uh, 
unfortunately started to overemphasize and just focus on the travel aspect and not uh, focus on the grow the game efforts. And so uh, we we took over the six and under program, which was was down around uh, 40 kids at that point, and uh, we grew it to 130 kids, and uh, we've been over 100 ever since. So. Um, it's uh, it's been great to be able to do, especially for our small community. We're we're pulling from a pretty small range, so uh, so we're we're pretty happy and excited with what how that works. Uh, as far as the Facebook uh, posts, um, the event posts, uh, yes, we do that, and the boosting does make a big difference. Even if it's at that twenty dollars, uh, I mean, it's the it's the difference for us. We'll we'll oftentimes do uh, public skating events. And we'll we'll have if we've boosted an event and made a, a specific event and done all the right things like Eric is talking about, um, we're seeing the difference between having, you know, 15 people show up versus 200 people show up, and uh, just just by posting early and having it visible for people and uh, being able to just put that little bit of money in it does go a long way for at least for the Facebook stuff right now. That's awesome. Um, one of the other things that Erica that you touched on was when you're driving people back to your website. So we, um, within a lot of our stuff, especially the Hatrick Growth Challenge, we encourage people to have a program pathway. So one thing you'll hear a lot um, on the coaching side is a player development pathway. Um, from the administrator side, we encourage, and I know Angie's seen me do this in person. <laughs> um, we talk about creating a program pathway so that when someone goes to your website, and this ties into everything you talked about, Jesse touched on everything was so focused on travel hockey. And especially as we get back to now, maybe an adjustment of how um, things might function. And we already know we did a lot of um, research in our department on what millennial parents wanted because um, Erica even alluded to those age ranges is millennial parents are still on Facebook, luckily. So this is still really relevant for us. So take advantage of it while you can, um, but they want a low cost, low commitment option. So people, a lot of organizations are really focused on travel hockey and how do you get kids back into the rink at that 6U and 8U level and, and get kids there. So when a non-hockey parent, um, one thing we talk about constantly in our department is we all know hockey. So if I go to a website, I know what I'm looking for. I grew up playing, um, I coach, so I know where to look for my information. But on your website, does a new hockey um, parent or someone who has never been interested in hockey before um, really know what to do when they go there. So having a really simple program pathway. So if you have a creative name for your youth hockey, your six and under, your eight and under, like skater tots, well, I'm a hockey person. I know what that means. I mean, even Erica's figure skating, she knows what that means, but does a non-hockey parent know what that means? So if you have different um, names for different things at different levels, but really mapping out what that program pathway is. Um, as we relaunch Club Excellence, one of the pieces that's going to be available in there, since the program pathway is part of that Hatrick Growth Challenge, we'll have a plug and play. So lots of people do a great job with it, and it's really simplified, but we're going to have one that you can use for your association so that it's really easily mapped out. So if I'm a non-hockey parent and I come to you, I, I know what programs are offered at what age levels, maybe all the way from 6U to adult, you can go up as far as you want. So um, some of those things really, as we kind of adjust to, to what this new hockey world will look like. And we're all looking forward to hockey being back, but um, helping you really with all these resources. And we know people have been off work. And so we really wanna give you those resources um, within Club Excellence and our Try Hockey for Free Days. So uh, one of the exciting things, and I don't think I've told Jesse or Angie this yet, but as we relaunch our Try Hockey for Free website, it'll be more informative for the non-hockey parent. So that it avoids, um, you know, we get a ton of questions because our phone number is listed there, but you as an association get a lot of questions too on what to expect for a Try Hockey Free Day and it'll be more informative, it'll be easier to navigate so that the non-hockey parent kind of knows what to expect. Um, you know, we, we talk about marketing to say, what's, what does hockey have that other sports don't have, right? Youth sports are gonna look a little different, but we have a controlled environment, the life lessons are different. You know, we're always in a cold place. Erica, you guys talked about marketing at a really cold day. Um, when you walk into a rink, is it welcoming? Not always, but you know, we, we know how much fun it is as hockey people. So, um, so I think that's really great. Did you guys have any other comments that you wanted to add um, before we're, before we sign off here? You know, one thing that I wanted to just add, Katie, we talked about it was um, when I first started doing the try hockey for free days, I tried to do it all myself and it was absolutely overwhelming. So even with 30 kids trying to do that all alone with you know four or five coaches. So over the years we um, progressed and 
uh, with the planning that USA Hockey gives you, um, there's volunteers at every section along the way. So even from the ramping up all the way through the actual day of event, we've pushed 110 kids through the rink, you know, outfitting in full gear because we had the vol like the bodies and the volunteers to do it. And people want to help. They want more kids playing the sport. So don't be afraid to ask your association to help you. Um, that's been something that over the years I've really had to, to learn how to do that. And it's been amazing. So helps like crazy. So I just want to point that out. You're not alone. I think that's really fantastic advice and, and making sure, you know, you have enthusiastic parents in your association. We've talked about this, you know, the mom that wants to talk to everybody, ask her to be the person welcoming kids when they walk in the door, you know, don't just go, okay, we shoved all these kids on the ice and then we're done. Jesse talked about, you know, the continue to play all that information should be available there. Um, and we do outline all of that for you in the best practices for try hockey for free and some of the training. So um, anything to add on that, Jesse? Yeah, sure. I think the only other two things that I'll, I'll mention is uh, there are a couple uh, things that we have done that have been kind of interesting and unique that that uh, would be kind of cool to see spread out a little bit more. Um, one of those is uh, lawn signs, especially during the political times, uh, being able to have uh, vote for hockey signs, uh, <laughs> something like that uh, is kind of a cool way. And people, everybody is always driving and seeing those kinds of things. So Having something like that is kind of a cool catch eye. Uh, and one other thing that we did was we ended up buying a 20 foot inflatable, uh, believe, believe it or not. So like one of those big inflatable hockey players and uh, just as kind of a unique thing. And, and as people kind of go by and things to catch catch eyes, um, it'd be cool to see, uh, you know, a nation full of giant inflatable hockey players. Uh, they're not too good idea. So that's um, on the... It as you bring that up, so on the connect piece of our website, right now you'll just connect with our program services team, which is myself and Taylor, but um, eventually we'd like to connect with pieces like that. So if I go, hey, someone really has some questions about how to promote a triage for free day, we'd have maybe Jesse's information up there for people to chat with, or you know, how do you work best with your figure skating club, ask Angie. So we really wanna connect associations with each other. Um, and then I did see, we have a question, know roughly when the revised Club Excellence site will be released. So right now we're on par for a launch in June. Um, so well before our hockey season's back underway. And um, for anybody who has used Club Excellence as a resource from an association standpoint, so the growth resources are separate, but also included within Club Excellence. Um, so now you would kind of sign into them separately, but you'll be able to access those within Club Excellence when it relaunches, which is good. Um, and there'll be some more things that are included in there, like data points that you can use. So especially when you're talking about growth, you might be able to see in a zip code where a lot of your players come from. So you can either say, great, we're doing a good job here and figure out where you might want to target some things. So with Facebook advertising, you can market to certain zip codes. And so there'll be some different utilizing um, tools to utilize within Club Excellence, which we're pretty excited about to relaunch. It was a little bit harder to navigate before, uh, but it should be it should be a lot more user friendly as we move forward, um, which will be fantastic for us and our local associations, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and some different things we incorporated in. I was at a women's conference with Angie in, um, in Anaheim and we're adding girls women specific growth resources. So we're excited within our department. Again, we our job is really to help our local associations, but we connect with all of our departments within USA Hockey um, to work really, really closely and make sure we're providing the, the right resources. So. Um, I think Dave, if you're still with us, I don't know that we have any other questions, but if anybody else wanted to add anything, feel free. I could add that, um, I think try hockey for free is an awesome initiative. I really like it. And I think don't trust me the power of the opportunity to try something for free is sometimes exactly what someone needs to like take that next step or to like give something a try. So, um, and so that's why it's so good. Like make sure when you have that campaign to promote your inner circle and your outer circle, you never know who would try it. So like, if yeah. there was something that was like calling all former figure skaters, like try play it, like learn to play hockey today where it's not like a skating lesson, but if I could actually learn, like I know the rules of the game, but like learn how to use the stick and how to do all these things, I would totally be on board for that. So I think- You know what? It's great to know that Erica, because the local women's yeah, association in town. I'm going to make sure you get invited next time. You can come to Austin. We have those. You're welcome to come out on the ice. Yeah, we have them here too. I'm going to make sure that I send that note over to you as figure skating next time we host one of those for my, my yeah. program here. But 
Um, Erica and I briefly talked about also we'll probably do something a little more in depth um, together soon, hopefully in the next couple of weeks on really marketing to outside um, our our uh, webinars and some of our conversations aren't necessarily on our national YouTube channel. So thank you, Dave, for having us in this group. But um, we'll be going really in depth on some things. But I also wanted to offer if you need any more resources or if you want our program services team um, as a local association to host a webinar for you or a Zoom conference with your local association right now while we're not traveling to dig more in depth into any of our resources, Try Hockey for Free, Hat Trick Growth Challenge, Club Excellence. We are more than happy to do that for you. So we are here as a resource. Always feel free to reach out and we can customize something for you, especially right now while everybody's home. Um, if you want to take advantage of, you know, any of that downtime for your local association, we don't just have to do it on this national platform, but we can do it for you locally as well. Really great stuff. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining and sharing. That was great. Like uh, there's stuff I didn't, that I learned today. So it was great, you know. <laughs> Um, just, uh, I will put the, the links for the program services website and anything else just in, in the bottom of the YouTube, um, info. So if anybody wants it, you can contact Katie or Jesse, Angie, or Erica, but thank you very much. And we will see everybody next time on the USA hockey webinar series presented by BioSil and pure hockey. Have a great day, everybody.